Welcome to another episode of Dries's Kitchen. On this episode, we're going to prepare for you a three-course meal. A starter, a main course and a dessert. First is a tangy and tasty Thai beef salad, chilled if, 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 if possible, refreshing for the summer, followed by a traditional classic homemade lasagna, beef lasagna that is, full of fresh Italian herbs, oregano, etc, etc, right here, right in front of me, grown in my own garden, and olives, delicious, ah, oh, mouth-watering, mm, chocolate crepe, ah, oh, with a scoop of ice cream, the best. Some meat, 180 grams, that's what we have over there of beef. Okay, now you can do more or you can do less. Please go ahead. Now what Ali has done is taken a very thin strip of beef and he's actually made it even thinner by three times. Now that's amazing. It takes a master butcher to do something like this. So into strips, please. Oli, shall we please? Now we're going to start with a little bit of olive oil in the pan, yeah? Or oh, you got some oil in there already? You got some oil in there. Um, that's it, yeah? Go ahead, some beef. You want me to do it or you do it? Okay, picking like stringy type things. Okay. All right. Now what I would do over here as well, just for flavor's sake, I would throw in a little bit of fish sauce. Is that how you would do it, Oli? Yeah, just a little bit of fish sauce for the beef to absorb this beautiful Thai fish sauce. Mmm, can you smell the fishiness coming out? Yeah, all right, some black pepper, there we are, all there. And the salt, fortunately they can't do anything about the salt because it comes like this and it remains like this. This wonderful, beautiful sea salt. Okay, now, this is almost cooked. I would say it's cooked now. I mean, meat as well, most often shouldn't be cooked too, too well. It loses all its moisture. You want that mouth-watering, bursting flavor in your mouth. The meat should have juice in it, full of juice. Dry is bad, juice is good. Okay, there we are. This meat is juicy, look at that. It's spitting out juice. Can you see all the juice? Look at this. Look at all the juice in this meat. It's wet, it's moist, it's not dry. It's wonderful. Okay, bursting with flavor, bursting with flavor. Okay, now I'm gonna take this, oops, in here. There we are, in this nice big bowl. And of course the juices I'm gonna also put in there because that acts as a light stock for the salad, okay? that beautiful tasting meat juices cooked with a little bit of fish sauce, salt and black pepper is stock. I would even go as far as doing something else. Oli, we're gonna do something. I will take this olive oil that's gonna go in there, put a little bit in here, is, yeah, mix it. Take all this flavor, you know? Just take this flavor, it's all about flavor, mouth-watering flavors, bursting in the mouth. Everything should be full of flavor in the mouth, okay? And then I will pour it back here a little bit and leave the rest for her to use when necessary. Okay, that's it. Now we have our fresh basil in there, nice fresh basil. We have our sliced cucumbers and tomatoes all in there, wonderfully prepared. Onions got to be crunchy, onions got to be all loose and crunchy. There we are. These onions shouldn't be in one piece, they should be in many pieces. There we are. Lots of onions in this salad, but now we're going to put in about, uh, what I would say, this is about another two teaspoons, two teaspoonfuls of fish sauce. There we are, enough. This is maybe two to three teaspoons of fish sauce, okay? Then we're going to pour in just a tiny little bit of olive, about one teaspoon oil. Oh no, I'm going to take this one. Uh, about one teaspoon of olive oil more. There we are. Okay, that's it. And then fresh lime juice, there we are, beautiful, fresh, zesty, bursting flavor, bursting in the mouth. This is what it's all about, 
fresh bursting flavors. All right, and there we are. We have you as scrumptious, refreshing, ah, mouth-watering, bursting zestful flavor of a Thai fish uh, beef salad. Okay, now this is even better when it's stored in the fridge, chilled to about maybe one or two degrees and eaten when it's cold and refreshing on a hot summer day with a beautiful glass of white wine. You're in heaven. All you need is a beautiful woman next to you. Well, let's try this now on one of my most difficult customers, one of my most difficult critics. Be be, don't be surprised. Be prepared for something that's going to make you feel pretty embarrassed. I'll feel embarrassed at least. Let's go. Hello, David. Welcome to Dries' Kitchen. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got a cooking program on television. So I see. It'll be on GRTS from July 15th around till probably January the 15th, January 2005. You mean it's going to be every week or every, every month? Week, every week. Right. Yeah. And what we're doing is we're actually doing a taste test of the clients. Yeah. Sorry. So what we cook, we bring straight out and we allow our customers to taste and give us their comments. So Absolutely. far, we've only had good Beautiful. comments. Well, are we under orders to give good comments? I am sorry. Are we under orders? Only no, good you're comments? not. No, you're not. Are we allowed to spit it out? Oh and yes, say, you, can, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I can bring you that. even a bucket if you wish. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it. Chilli. Now this is a Thai beef salad you're eating. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Um, beef uh, okay. with on, some okay. onions. I don't eat red meat. Yeah, you can eat the salad I alone and taste yeah. it. It's got some cucumbers, onions, tomatoes. Uh, beef, fish sauce, uh, basil, and all of that. Thai. Yeah. Okay. We've just prepared it. It really should be in the fridge for about an hour, hour mm. and a half, to be so that it chills up. It's nicer when it's chilled and cool. It's very, very good. It's really nice. Is it really? Have you put lime on it? Yes. Hey guys, I thought this was my most difficult critic. It's a and winner. I, and I already set myself up mm. for a shock. Well, ah, but I tell you, he says it's good and it's very, very good. Another happy customer. It's got fresh air. It's, it's a winner. fresh. It's, a it's winner. fresh. He says lively, it's lively, fresh, it's colorful, colorful. Um, it's tasty. Tasty. It's light and yet satisfying. What light. else do you want me to oh, say? It's come a eclectic. On. It's a juxtaposition of many. Eclectic, foods. she says. <laughs> wow. And then what he said one thing. It's fresh and it's. Lively. Yeah. There you are, bursting in the mouth with flavors. That's what it's all about. <laughs>
and not stick onto the meat. And that adds that diffused flavor which bursts in your mouth when you bite that piece of meat. So a bit of tomato paste. We've got two tablespoons here. Oli, do you want it very m more or is that fine for you? Okay, now a little bit of water. So what we do is we mix this thing apart. Okay, mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it. You see, all that water I've put in, believe it or not, has been absorbed by the paste. So that tells you this paste is dry. It's a good quality paste, but tomato paste works better when it has some water added to it. It becomes moist, juicy. It diffuses through the meat easier. It becomes more tasting. I've put about half a bottle of water and believe me, I could still put more water in there. All right, so most people take the paste. Look, no water coming out, still pasty. Most people take the paste and just throw it immediately into the food. Well, that's wrong. That's not good cooking. Huh? You're adding paste, bitter paste onto your food. Diluted, 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 diluted. Diluted more and more and more and more and throw a nice juicy tomato paste in there. Everything has to be juicy, bursting with flavors, full of bursting liquid moist flavors. And just the last bit of water and I think we're okay now. Okay, this is it now, I think we've done it. Okay, there you see, now we have this beautiful liquidy tomato paste. Now that's the way to do it. This is it. All right, this has uh, been simmering now for about five minutes. Um, use your own judgment, all right? Five minutes is about sufficient because don't forget it's going to bake in the oven again. Now, Oli has thrown in some fresh oregano. Now, this oregano I grow myself in my garden. Fresh oregano grown locally in the Gambia. Tastes better than what you buy in the supermarkets in England. This is organic, fresh, bursting, exploding in the mouth with flavor. I tell you that, okay? All right, now there we are. Oreg I would actually put a little more oregano only, yeah, because uh, we don't, we're not messing around too much with uh, spices here. Instead, we're going to put a lot of fresh herbs and you get that wonderful bursting flavor exploding in your mouth with the taste of fresh herbs. That's what it's all about. Now, Oli is making the bechamel sauce. She's put about a spoonful of butter in the cooking pot, all right? and half chopped onions, half chopped onions in the spoonful of butter which is sizzling in the cooking pot. All right, Oli, let's go. Your flour, your milk and all of that. Okay, are you ready now? About two tablespoons of flour. Yeah, two tablespoons of flour in there. Yes, I'll be with her in just a minute. Two tablespoons of flour. Okay, okay, two tablespoons of flour. There we are. Just mix it around, let the onions absorb it, okay, let the butter absorb it. And uh, how are you, Kara? You okay? Good. You're on TV. There you are. All right. All right. And then some milk. Let's say this is going to translate to about, go ahead. This is about a whole cup of milk. A whole cup of milk. There we are. Okay. All right, meanwhile, this has been sizzling. This tomato sauce has been sizzling. I'm going to turn it off right now because I don't really want it to lose its moisture. All right, so there we are. Oli, I think you need a bit of flour, a bit more. Yeah, a bit more flour. Let's say another two tablespoons of flour, making it four. So we've used half an onion, now four tablespoons of flour. Okay, there we are. It's getting better now. It's becoming more like a bechamel. Some milk, please. Okay. All right, enough. About another half. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kara. We'll take care of that. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. So we've got another half a cup of milk over there. And we are getting to the real bechamel now. Okay. Bechamel is a combination of flour, water, and in this case, butter and onions onions that have been softened in butter. It gives actually what is a creamy, a creamy sort of texture to the, uh, to the lasagna. It takes away from just the meat and pasta, giving it a little more moisture, okay? Now I've put, I've put two pinches, 
let's say three pinches of salt okay and I'll even put some black pepper in there maybe about a pinch of black pepper there we are okay now this is ready all ready now for cooking all right what we're gonna use is some dry lasagna leaves over here we've got some dry lasagna over here okay uh, we are not going to boil this because this is so thin that it will actually cook from the moisture of the meat and the moisture of the tomato paste and the moisture of the lasagna. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove eight sheets of lasagna. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. There we are. Eight. I might, this is for a two-story lasagna. I might do a three-story lasagna, which means we'll use 12 sheets. But I'll show you that as we go along. Ready, Oli? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Let's try that. Mm. Mm. Bursting, exploding with flavor. Yum, yum, yum. Ah, ah, this is good. I tell you it's good. Oli, there you are. Your lasagna sheets ready to be laid economic lady she uses three instead of four fantastic little bit of mincemeat there we are one two three okay spread it around i think we can take four okay spread it around 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 okay sorry yeah, a little bit of white sauce here. Actually, I'll put just a little bit more of beef here. Okay. Yeah, there we are. Okay. A little bit of bechamel, which is right here. Now, look, this is like a white sauce. It's like a cream. It's a white sauce called a bechamel. But what we're using it for is the creamy effect. And we've got copies of them here as well. We've got volumes of them, as a matter of fact. Some more sheets, one, two, and three. Okay, all right, some more lasagna. I think we'll pour it all now. There we are, all of it comes here. Some more of the filling. There we are, all round. You see, Oli, look at how I do it. I push it always to the sides, so it reaches the side. So when you cut it as well, it looks better. Okay, and then, one more thing we're going to do, but this time we're going to use one, two, three, four. Okay. So we've actually used uh, three, six, nine, ten. Ten sheets of lasagna. Some cheddar cheese. Oh, gouda. Okay. Cheddar is also nice because cheddar is sharp. Gouda is very mild. Maybe I suggest in the future you use cheddar. What I'm putting in here, I will tell you, is about three handfuls of cheddar, grated cheese, which translates to maybe about 300 grams, 300, 325 grams. Right, Oli? Okay, there we are. Okay, there we are. All of it on here. Okay, there we are. Now, this is all ready for the oven. Oven, oven, oven. Hooray! A beautiful dish with a wonderful lasagna ready to blow the mind of your guests off. Bursting with flavor, exploding in the mouth. Here we have a beautiful traditional Italian lasagna. Enjoy it, savor it. Hello ladies, how are you? Hi gentlemen. Well, we've got a show going on at the moment called Dries's Kitchen. Uh, it's a cooking show that starts on GRTS and sometime in mid-July and we'll go to January of 2005. And basically what we're doing is we're doing a real life sort of show. We cook food, we bring it out, we get the customers around spontaneously by surprise to taste the food and tell us what you think. This might have gone a little bit cold now. But this is a lasagna yeah. uh, that we've just prepared now. I would like you both to try it and tell me what you think. I brought a, a third fork for the other lady there who has disappointed me. I'm sure she'd like my food, but she's afraid of the camera. Oh, well, I mean, 
please come and eat some. But we know some people don't like cameras. It's really nice. Nice, nice yeah. I'm so full. Good, yeah. Is it like bursting in the mouth with flavors? Like it's very spicy, no? Very spicy, yeah. yeah. That's what we're very looking tasteful, for. Yeah. Very tasteful. Mm, bursting in the mouth with flavors. Yes. Exploding with all kinds of different variety of ingredients. Oh in yeah. The mouth, yeah. It is a very sexy dish, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is, yeah. yeah. Well, the girls think it's a sexy dish. Oh, I think is. so, very too. Sexy. Yeah, so I more satisfied customers. <laughs> Can we address it? <laughs>
We're talking about a crepe, a French crepe. All right. Now, Mr. Barrow over here is going to prepare for us our crepe à la Francais. Mais Monsieur Barrow, tu n'as pas besoin d'une spatula, peut-être? Alors, Oli, can we have a spatula for Mr. Barrow, please? Oh, Monsieur Barrow, mais vous n'êtes pas prêt. OK, vas-y, commence, on y va. On va utiliser les mains au lieu. Les mains, les originales. Oui, les mains sont les, 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 les matériels, comme on le dit en français, tools. OK. Montrez aux caméras, s'il te plaît. OK, attends, oui, il faut montrer aux caméras. Yeah. Il faut montrer aux caméras. Tiens, you see, he's turned it around till it's coated the, the pan. OK. Now we've got to wait for it to cook a little bit, and then we flip it over. Monsieur Barreau, c'est pas prêt à tourner? Un peu? Un peu, un peu, un peu. Un tout petit peu. Uh, takes about three minutes and a half. Come here in the minute. Yeah, three minutes, he says. I say about three minutes and a half. Because, you see, if something is undercooked, it's hard to see. But if it's getting overcooked, you'll catch it quickly. So three and a half minutes means if it takes the extra half a minute and it hasn't burnt, it's okay. But if it's three minutes, it may not be cooked as it should be. All right. Yeah, it's on low heat. On low heat. Okay. But then again, I would do it on medium heat. Hello, Mr. Barov. We've been flip for no hurry. There we are. Now look at the beautiful brown texture coming out of this. Huh? Coming out. This means it's like cooking to perfection at the moment. Uh, maybe another minute and a half. Okay, vous pouvez tourner encore, Monsieur Barrow, s'il vous plaît. Okay. Hooray. Now, chocolate sauce, please. Okay. Would you like to see what's going on here? A little bit of chocolate sauce into the crepe. Now, this is the bit you've got to do by hand. You must do by hand. Okay. All right. Now a nice rectangular folded crepe over here onto this plate. Hooray, one of them ready. Uh, Mr. Chef Barrow has had to rush to the kitchen. He's just had an order for 150 crepes and he can't do them out here. He's gone in, in the kitchen very busy. Alphonse is taking over, another master crepe maker, who's going to show us now how to actually fold a crepe. Okay, how to fold the crepe with the nice chocolate. And a good customer of ours just made a remark. David Summers said to remind the clients that they should buy 70% cocoa in the chocolate. I did say cooking chocolate earlier, but some of you might not really know what cooking chocolate is. It must have 70% cocoa in it. Otherwise, you'll have a horrible, sticky substance. Anything that isn't that, uh, doesn't have that percentage of cocoa is probably processed with a lot of chemicals and all those chemicals will break apart once you put them in heat and you won't get the desired results. So now we have the crepe being folded by Alfonsi. Nicely folded. There we are. Okay, Alfonsi, hooray. And then we'll play one more on top like this. You can lay the crepes really however you want. Okay, I'm going to lay them a little bit at an angle to make a little bit of action. Okay, at an angle like that. Hooray. Okay. All right. A little bit of chocolate sauce just coming on top. There we are. Wow. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yummy, yummy, yummy chocolate. Some raspberries, Alfonsi. Some raspberries, please. A beautiful raspberry here. And maybe another one there. Okay. And maybe one more little Gambian raspberry grown at, in, in Kotu right here. Okay. And this nice nana, our beautiful Gambian mint that everybody puts in their attire. And what have we got? A beautiful crepe au chocolat à la butcher shop right here for you. And here's your chocolate crepe, moist, warm, ready, full of 70% cocoa, Belgian chocolate, melted with nice butter and, and milk, prepared to burst into your mouth and explode with its own beautiful cocoa flavors. Hadi, 
uh, another good customer of ours. She's here almost every day at 6 o'clock to buy her meat for dinner. Can you please help us? We want you to taste this crepe we've just prepared for our TV program, Dries' Kitchen, which starts in July. Come over, Hadi, please. That's a chocolate crepe here. Yeah? Okay, take it, hold it, eat it. Do what you want with it. Tell us what you think. Delicious. Is it really? Yeah, it is. How does it feel in the mouth? Mm. Well, it feels heavenly. Heavenly, wow. This is incredible. <laughs> We're getting there. We're going higher. Heavenly. <laughs> is it bursting with flavors in your mouth? Yeah, it Exploding is. Exploding with sensuality. Really? Oh, it that's it. We've got it. Another happy customer. <laughs> Well, everyone, thank you for watching this episode of Dries' Kitchen. I hope you enjoyed this experience with our three-course meal full of mouth-watering, bursting flavors. Until the next time, keep those flavors sizzling in the mouth. Allow them to simmer. Let them burst and explode whenever they do. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.